Hi everyone, I'm Jay Fadden. Thank you so much for joining us today on This Is The Day. And Father, really great show talking about priests. I always like that type of show. Yes, and Michael Accord is joining us today. It'd be great to have him on the show. He's the executive director of the World Apostolate of Fatima in the United States. And our great friends, Loretta Gallagher and my brother priest, Father Dan Hennessy, are here to talk about a very special event that will celebrate vocations and the priesthood. Kevin, what will we hear about in the news today? Jay, the Pope talked about preaching in a new way to promote the new evangelization. And we'll have details on that. Also, the Pope addressed Italian public officials urging them to exercise dignity and responsibility in their positions. And the U.S. House passes the Protect Life Act. All those stories head in the news. Jay? All that and much more right now on This is the Day. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Jay Fadden. Thank you so much for joining us today on This Is The Day. Joined as always by my wonderful friends, Kevin Nelson and Father Reed. And it's good to be back. I was away last week, so I love being back here. Good yeah, welcome here. back. And I, and I have something for you. You have something? Now that you're back, yeah. Oh, you're you reaching know, in your pocket. I have the key to your office. Really? This is the key to your office. But I have a very special chain. It has, <laughs> it has Jesus on it, the sacred heart. But that's not all. Oh, it does that's something? That's not all. It actually is a flashlight. Really? Yep, there you go. And See what that? made you decide to do that? Well, I just thought it would be nice to uh, uh, I will remind this. you that Jesus is the light of your life and the light of the world. Wow, it's good to huh? get gifts. But Kevin would get a gift when he comes back from vacation. Oh, we'll see. I got a gift, though. If I'm he's feeling, good. I have nothing for you, though. So Because you weren't here last week, either. I know, but I mean, you know, you're always losing your keys. So Hey, a special <clears> thank you, by the way, to Kate. Uh, Katie Andrews, who was on the program, and Bonnie Rogers, while we were not here, uh, did a great job. Yeah, Very did, impressed. Did. It's not an easy thing to do, you know. I watched from a uh, undisclosed remote location. Is that now. what you're going to say? Yes. I watched from my house. I'll disclose that. I, I disclose everything. Hey, you know what? I'm really excited about today's program. Uh, first of all, we'll learn a little bit about Fatima. Right. And then speaking with uh, Loretta and Father Dan about the, the priests, because what they're doing uh, for priests, I think, is very important because... A lot of times, you know, we see priests in the parish and we think, oh boy, you know, they, they do the mass and mm -hmm. they do a couple things here and there, a wedding, and, and that's it. But these guys work hard all the time, and this is a great way to recognize priests and to mm -hmm. say thank you to them. It is. It's nice to know you're supported. It's nice to know you're being prayed for. And, uh, you know, I, I cannot uh, help but uh, keep in mind the fact that there are some guys who have lost much of their family and a lot mm -hmm. of their friends. And so to know that they still have that support of the church community. And the thing is, too, very important to remember, that this great uh, celebration in Mass is also occurring on the day that um, we celebrate the life and the greatness of Blessed John Paul II. Mm -hmm. uh, although that feast can only be celebrated, I think, in, in Rome and in Poland, because that's his home country. Still, we can honor him, and what a great day to do uh, to do this, to pray together at Mass and celebrate the priesthood. Well, when you say that, too, and you, you said some of the guys don't have as much family. I remember Father Frank McFarland. You know, he was it. That was it. He had no family when he Because he didn't have brothers away. and sisters. He had no brother. He was an only child. Uh, his parents, when they had Father Frank, were older. And so he had no family when yeah. he died. And, but you know who was his family? You guys. All of you people who watch on Catholic TV. Um, you were his family. He knew how important this was, and he called it the Parish of the Airways, but he believed that. Yeah. And, and what he, a great support it was. And he was the was. pastor, and he really was, in, yeah. in, in the truest uh, sense of that term. Also, of course, Father Dan Hennessy is the Director of Vocations for the Archdiocese, mm -hmm. and we've had uh, a great uh, upsurge in vocations, uh, both at St. John's Seminary, also at Blessed John the 23rd National Seminary. Uh, a lot of new guys coming in, and great guys as well. And he and his office have done, uh, you know, an, an exceptional job in encouraging vocations. And we hope that we're doing that in, in our own subtle little way, in our own helpful little way here at Catholic TV, uh, to let you know how important it is that we have good, holy, and happy priests. And, and I hope that, that I 
at least I hope that I give a good example. To that. Hey, I have to tell you an experience I had. I was at Mass, and I always, you know me, I, I go, I'm at Mass with my wife. 7.30? And the 7.30, I always go to the 7.30. Back row? I'm pretty much in the middle. But, but my James, my son, actually tried to sit on the other side. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. No, we're going to sit where we always sit. We're not going to sit on the other side. James. We have to get back. So we went over to the so other side to sit down. Yeah. The and, parish. And so I, at, what I always do is at points I'll look around just to see people. We all do. do oh, good, good. So I don't, feel, I don't feel as guilty. This is kind of confessional in a way then, I guess. But you know one thing I noticed? There was an older couple who mm -hmm. were there. And I would say in their mid to late 80s. Yeah. They just stood side by side at the Mass, holding hands during the oh, Mass. Nice. And then when they went up to communion, the wife actually helped the husband mm -hmm. and helped him up, went back, went back to their pew, and it just meant a lot. It was great to watch. I'm having visions <laughs> in like about 25 years of uh, Jay and Shirley and Shirley helping Jay up to communion. I'm having visions 25? Try about 25 minutes. <laughs> I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting older very quickly, I've learned. So, but that's okay. Maybe hey, we're also coming. very blessed today to have uh, guests from Germany, uh, from the uh, Bishop's yeah. Conference in Germany. Yeah. And uh, they're here to just uh, kind of spend some time with us and um, uh, learn about Catholic TV. And we're going to learn about what they're doing in Germany. And hopefully we'll be helping each other out. A good looking group, too. They're yeah. a good looking group. Yeah. But you know who's good looking? Speak beautiful English, too. Yeah. Well, you know who's a good-looking, too, is Kevin Nelson. Kevin Nelson is the He's best. a handsome man. Kev, now you're doing over there. Thank you, Jay. Uh, good to have you back, <laughs> Father Reed. Yeah, you just, you like to wear Father No, actually, you sat in my chair last time. I watched those shows. <laughs> Don't think I didn't notice that. Kevin, what's going on around the world in the Catholic faith? All right, thanks, Jay and Father. Hello, everyone. It is time to take a look at the news, and we begin from the Vatican. During the Sunday Angelus, Pope Benedict XVI spoke of preaching the gospel in the new way. This promotes his recent announcement of the Year of Faith. Rome Reports has the details on the story and the Pope's recognition of World Mission Day. Thousands of people gathered in St. Peter's Square to hear the Pope's Sunday Angelus. The Pope talked about preaching the gospel in a new way as a means to promote the new evangelization. Also present were many of those who attended the recent Congress on the new evangelization. The Pope talked about ways to renew the message of the gospel in countries with Christian roots. It's opportunity to call the beauty and the centrality of faith, the desire to strengthen it and strengthen it on a level of personal and community, and to make it in perspective not only celebrative, but piuttosto missionaria della prospettiva appunto della missione accentis e della nuova evangelizzazione. As a way to remember World Mission Day, the Pope also recognized the work of the Second Vatican Council and the Mission Agentis, which focuses on highlighting the gospel in areas that don't have a firm grip on Christianity. Invito a todos a identificarsi cada dia más con Jesu Cristo para que fieles a los compromisos bautismales y con la fuerza del Espíritu Santo lleven por doquia la buena noticia del Evangelio con una fe activa, una esperanza firme, una caridad ardiente. Also present in St. Peter's Square were those who took part in a so-called Green Rally to promote a healthy world environment. In news from around the country, Bishop Robert Finn and his Diocese of Kansas City, St. Joseph, entered pleas of not guilty to misdemeanor charges of failure to report child abuse. The charges in relation to the diocese's handling of the case of Father Sean Radigan were acknowledged in a statement on the diocesan website. The bishop's attorney said that Bishop Finn has denied any criminal wrongdoing and the bishop has cooperated with law enforcement at all stages. If convicted, Bishop Finn could be charged a $1,000 fine and serve one year in jail. The diocese faces a fine of up to $5,000. Father Radican was arrested in May on state charges of possessing child pornography. He has been also charged by federal prosecutors with producing child pornography. In September, the diocese commissioned an independent report which found its policies and procedures on assessing child sexual abuse allegations had shortcomings in action and confusing procedures and diocesan leaders failed to follow their own policies and procedures for responding to reports relating to abuse claims. In the diocesan statement, Bishop Finn said that once the situation with Father Radican arose, the diocese began to address the issue that led to this crisis. 
In a message read in parishes at masses in early June, Bishop Finn expressed regret for the way the diocese handled information it received about Father Radigan's activities. He said he took full responsibility for all failures and apologized to his diocese. In other news from the Vatican, Italy's prime minister was facing a confidence vote in the lower house of Italy's parliament. At the exact moment, Pope Benedict XVI called on Italian public officials to exercise their offices with dignity and responsibility. The Pope met with Roberto Moroni, Italy's interior minister, and about 200 prefects who represent the interior ministry in Italy's provinces. The prefects recognize St. Ambrose as their patron saint, who was a public servant before being named Bishop of Milan. Catholic News Service's Carol Glatz has more on the Pope's meeting. St. Peter's Square looked like it was on high security alert, with large numbers of police officers and vehicles parked around the square. But they weren't all here for work. About 200 police prefects had a special audience with Pope Benedict. The prefects recognize as their patron saint, St. Ambrose, who was a government official before being named a Bishop of Milan. In his address, Pope Benedict said St. Ambrose believed temporal authority was delegated by God for the common good of humanity. For that reason, the Pope said, the leaders of civil servants have an almost sacred duty that must be carried out with dignity and responsibility. Their role, he said, is to protect the weakest members of Italian society, which is all the more important and difficult during times of economic and social uncertainty. Now, uncertainty was definitely in the air today as Italy awaited whether their Italian Prime Minister, Silvio Berlusconi, would be voted out of power. The Pope's speech was delivered at midday, just as Berlusconi faced a confidence vote in Parliament. Though he survived the vote, it was still seen as the most serious threat to his political survival, since the billionaire, who has been beset by scandals, swept into power nearly two decades ago. And finally in the news, the U.S. House, in a bipartisan vote of 251 to 172, passed the Protect Life Act, which applies long-standing federal policies on abortion funding and conscience rights to the health reform law. In a statement, Deidre McQuaid, spokeswoman for the U.S. Bishop's Pro-Life Secretariat, said that by passing H.R. 358, the House has taken an important step toward authentic health care reform that respects the dignity of all from conception onward. McQuaid urged the Senate to likewise help make health care reform life-affirming. She said that the Protect Life Act applies the Hyde Amendment to health care reform so federal funds will not be used to subsidize elective abortions, which McQuaid said brings the law into line with other federal health programs such as Medicaid and the Federal Employees Health Benefits Program. McQuaid added that it also helps ensure that the government will not pressure health professionals to participate in abortion against their medical judgment, moral convictions, or religious beliefs. And that is all the news we have for you on this Tuesday, October 18th, 2011. Let's send it back over to Father Reed and Jay with more of This Is The Day. Kevin, thank you very much. And joining us now is Michael LaCourt, Executive Director of the World Apostolate of Fatima today. Michael, thank you very much for being with us. How are you doing? Oh, great, Father Reed and uh, Jay. It's so, so wonderful to be with you here today. Great to have you with us. Well, October 13th marks the 94th anniversary of the last apparition at Fatima. Why does this remain so important today? Well, the message of Fatima is a message for all people, not just Catholics, and for all time. Um, and Our Lady, you know, if you sort of bring this message down into just a few elements uh, for this short period of time we have, Our Lady of Fatima explained to us that Satan has in his grips way too many souls that uh, we could experience a period on Earth where nation wars so terrible that nations will be annihilated could take place and she also explained that the church could have much to suffer but more importantly this is a message of hope and she also gave us the path to avoid all of these things and as we see the troubles in the world today um, you know i'll stand in front of thousands of people and give a talk and the, one of the first things i always ask them is how many of you believe the world is in serious trouble today? And almost every hand goes up. Uh, but what people don't seem to understand, um, even those that know the message of Fatima, uh, and uh, the way I put it is the problems we face in the world are a result 
of too much sin and too little reparation. And I think that's sort of the essence of her message. When we turn our back on God and don't ask for his help and try to do it on our own, we get ourselves in trouble. But when we bring God back into our lives and back into our cultures, then we get that insight from heaven. We get that help that we're asking for, and um, we can avoid, you know, we can get off the wrong path and back on the right path. Michael, this is Father Reed. You know, I don't think anybody could argue with that statement that you just made. It is a message of hope. We were fortunate just the other day to have the, uh, the, the, tr the traveling statue of Our Lady of Fatima here in our chapel for Mass. And, you know, the Blue Army has been around for many years in the World Apostolate of Fatima. Could you tell us a little bit about it and, and fill people in about the Blue Army sure. and the Apostolate? Yeah, the Blue Army, um, which is also called the World Apostolate of Fatima, is an association of pontifical right, and it is Pope John Paul II that elevated us to that status. It's the highest status the Church has for a lay apostolate. We've been around 65 years. We're in over 100 countries. <clears throat> we started in 1947 in the United States, and the mission the Church has given us is to help people learn, live, and spread the message of Our Lady of Fatima. <clears throat> and it was Pope John Paul II's commitment to this message as a means of helping the world today um, that caused our status to be elevated. He basically said to us, look, um, there just aren't enough vocations out there for us to get this message everywhere. Uh, would you guys uh, increase your responsibility within the church and do do even more than you've done during all these years and we have millions and millions of members throughout the world but there's just well there's so much more work to be done can you tell us michael where people can learn more about the shrine and and the great work that is being done sure um they're free to call me and then our website is bluearmy.com is probably the easiest to do it and we also have tremendous tools. Uh, we, just, uh, we just released yesterday a new movie called Holy Odyssey, The Journey of a Sacred Treasure. There's also a movie, Fatima, and it's simply called Fatima, that we were very involved in the production of, that the History Channel purchased. Um, uh, and we didn't own the movie, but we were involved in its production. And we have the rights to sell the DVD because they weren't going to get it out there. So we've you know, got thousands and thousands of copies of that out there. But that's a way to get a general overview of what Our Lady was trying to bring us, the message she was trying to bring us to help us understand that, yes, we have to do the hard work. Yes, we have to you know, try to change Washington. But uh, it's really bringing God back into our lives in our culture, um, and then making those acts of reparation that repair the damage that sin does. And as an example, in, I was just speaking in North Dakota, and this, this sort of uh, really excited me. In North Dakota, without any help from the legislature, the good people of North Dakota prayed away every abortion clinic except one, and there's one left that they're working on and praying away now. Uh, and I'm not saying it doesn't take hard work, too, but if we leave out the spiritual element, uh, it, you know, we, we lose the, the results that we would normally get. Well, Michael, thank you so much for being with us today. Keep up the great work. It's a great message, and it's something we really need in the world today. Thanks for being with us. We'll have you on again. Well, I appreciate it, and thank you so much. And uh, God bless everybody there, and all the work that you do is tremendous. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, God bless Michael. you. Right. Very important. Always good to hear what's going on because you don't know. I mean, you don't know. Yeah. Well, we have great work still to do here on This Is A Day. Loretta and Father Dan will be out here right after this quick break. Stay with us. Our family has spanned the centuries and the globe. With God's grace, we started hospitals to care for the sick. We establish orphanages and help the poor. We are the largest charitable organization on the planet, bringing comfort to those in need.
We educate more children than any other institution. We developed the scientific method and founded the college system. We defend the dignity of human life and uphold marriage. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we compiled the Bible. We are transformed by sacred scripture and sacred tradition, which have guided us for 2,000 years. We are the Catholic Church, with over one billion in our family, sharing in the sacraments and fullness of the Christian faith. Jesus started our church when he said to Peter, the first pope, you are rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. So if you've been away from the Catholic Church, we invite you to take another look. Visit catholicscomehome.org today. We are Catholic. Welcome home. I am a good listener. Yo puedo hablar dos I'm idiomas. able to speak two languages. I am able to see the goodness in everyone. I am very funny. <laughs> I'm serious. I am praying for my brother. I am an avid reader. I am reading the Bible again. I mean, really reading it. I am true to myself. A true friend. True to my word. I, I am, am answering, answering God's, God's calling. My hero isn't able to slam dunk. Doesn't make a million dollars a year. Can't rap at all. My hero helped my mom when she was pregnant. Takes care of us. Charles the Hen loved me. My hero, my dad. If you're facing an unplanned pregnancy, learn more today about parenting or adoption. While there are unwanted pregnancies, there are no unwanted children. And joining us now is Loretta Gallagher and Father Dan Hennessy of the Sarah Club to talk about the upcoming Priesthood Sunday. Hey guys, thanks so much for being with us again. Thank you. We've had both of you guys on before, so yes. oh, you're kind of co-host with Father Reed and myself. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I like that. We have now we have four co-hosts. Pretty soon we'll have to have people all over the place. Right. We'll have a hundred co-hosts. All right. Hey, Loretta, tell us about the work of this of Sarah Boston. Um, Sarah Boston exists to try and promote and affirm vocations to the priesthood and religious life. And we work in conjunction with the vocations office to do all we can to support the cardinal and Father Dan's office in anything we can do. We were talking earlier, you know, about the importance of the adopted priest program and how it supports all of us, you know, in, in, in such a powerful mm -hmm. and prayerful way. But how, Father Dan, how does this impact your work in trying to encourage men who have that call to, to consider it and discern a, a vocation? Sure. Well, I, I think one thing is that prayer has to be the basis of every 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 christian's life of course but especially for somebody who's thinking about the about the priesthood uh, the, it prayer needs to be the basis of their their life as they're discerning the the call and i think for many people to be praying for future priests is very necessary because then we have we have these men becoming more and more men of prayer mm -hmm. but i think that also that a priest needs to be uh, a man who has a deep, intimate friendship with Christ. And I think for the faithful to be able to pray for that, for that priest, that he develops that friendship more and more every day in, in the, the everyday life of a priest. Mm -hmm. Loretta, yeah. there's a mass coming up uh, celebrating the apostolate and early celebration of Priesthood Sunday. Tell us a little bit mm -hmm. about that. Um, actually, I think Father Dan should tell you more about the, the <laughs> Father mass. Dan, Only you hey, tell us about that. He was, the, okay. he was the main organizer, okay. so I'll, I'll defer to him. So you're the him. man. You're sure. the guy. All right. Okay. The Thank, you. Thank you, Loretta. You're welcome, Father. So, so in the Archdiocese of Boston, of course, we've been having this adopt a priest apostolate for yep. several years, and we've wanted to have a, a mass to celebrate all of the priests who, who are being prayed for, but also to ask all of those who are mm -hmm. the adopters to come in to mm -hmm. the cathedral and have a mass with the with the cardinal uh, to recognize the the good work that they've been doing as uh, as spiritually adopting the priest. So we, for several years, we were trying to set it up, but dates weren't working. So we mm -hmm. finally set a date, and it happened to be October 22nd. Uh, about a month or two after that, the uh, the Holy Father named uh, October 22nd to be the the memorial, the feast day for. For uh, blessed John Paul II, so so we decided to combine the two, and and we have this uh, this talk by George Weigel uh, after after the mass, which would be which would be very interesting. And uh, Mr. Weigel is going to speak specifically about his knowledge, his friendship, his appreciation for blessed John Paul II. Right. Yes, yeah. yeah, being a, being his biographer, yeah. 
and uh, he just has a recent book out on, on the Holy Father. So I've interviewed him before. Yeah. He is excellent. Yeah. He is excellent. Can anyone <coughs> attend this mass? Is this something that you have to be in the Sierra Club or anyone can go? Open to everybody. everybody. As a no matter charge? of fact, we're inviting everybody free. <laughs> no charge. <laughs> no charge. <laughs> he, actually, the talk afterwards is no charge as oh, well. That's good. So mass, yeah. of course, yeah. is always no charge, but the talk as well. So everybody is welcome. We hope a lot of people will, will be coming. We're expecting a big crowd. What Except, of course, for the price that Jesus paid on the cross. That's right. His blood. Yes. That what are your hopes and choice. dreams? What are you for this t t on uh, Saturday, the twenty second? What are your big hopes? My hope is that mm -hmm. many, many people mm -hmm. will come to know and love Christ mm -hmm. more and more. Uh, in addition to that, my hope is that many people will will come to know and love the witness of John Paul the Great, John Paul the mm -hmm. Second, and also my my hope is that we'll be able to have many of the people who are participating in the Adopt a Priest Apostolate be there so that we can recognize and thank them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Loretta, what is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah the me? basket. I mean, uh, <laughs> this, is, this is the fruit of the labors of the Serens of Boston. Um, we began this apostolate three years ago, and so we've prepared each envelope has in it, um, well, actually, I'll do a, you have a model show and tell it. here. <laughs> um, each envelope has in it the Sarah Club of Boston brochure that tells a little bit about us, a nice um, pamphlet on why pray for our bishops and priests, that's put out by the Faith Guild in uh, Kentucky. And each, each priest in there has a folder. This is a beautiful icon of Christ the High Priest. And um, I just happen to be holding the one for His Eminence, wow. Cardinal Sean, and another very illustrious priest of the Archdiocese. Who's he? Hmm. Oh, Father, Father Robert Reed. Reed. Father Some, Robert you know Reed. him? Yeah, I heard I him. Know. Oh, when's his birthday? Oh. Yeah, June 1st. <laughs> No, 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 no sorry, June, June 11th. June 11th. Shh, it doesn't say the year, don't worry. <laughs> okay. No, each, 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 each of these pamphlets, though, um, has a priest of the archdiocese, their name, their ordination date, and their birthday, so that the faithful can remember them, hopefully with a card, especially prayer. But the cards and the contact is very important, because this is the only mm -hmm. way priests really know that they have been spiritually adopted, and many beautiful relationships and friendships have formed over the, over the years. Mm -hmm. People are very possessive of their priests. Yeah, so that's great. We I'm going to actually seal these now. I'm going to put, this is, let's see, the Cardinals, and why don't you lick that one? <laughs> and this is Father Reed's. And we, and have, we have one minute, so uh, if people are interested in doing this, how, how would they do it? They would go to the Sarah Boston website, sarahboston.org, mm -hmm. and they can either sign up online or we are going to kick it off at the cathedral. So these will be available at the cathedral. They just have to come and sign mm -hmm. up, and they can pick oh. an envelope. And I'm going to pick one of those up. You are. But you first, put it we're going to put I these two in. Go Don't for it. look. And, and as we go, find your priest. Loretta, Father Dan, thank you so much for being with us. I'm going to pick this one right here. That's for you. And know that all of you are in our thoughts and in our prayers. And we ask God's right. special blessing upon all of our priests who serve us so well and bless us with the presence of Christ in our lives and in the church. And on all of you, our faithful viewers, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining Michael and Father Dan and Loretta and Jay and Kevin and all of us here in the Catholic TV living room. We love coming into yours. Until next time, everyone, God bless and have a great week.